personally, I did not know uh, uh, him at the time. You know, it was like, you know, Dennis, I'd met, to the best of my recollection, I'd met Dennis one time before that, when Eddie Gilbert was still booking uh, ECW. Uh, he had to run by the Renaissance Hotel near the Philadelphia airport to pick up a check or something from, from Dennis. And uh, we pulled in, and I went in with him, and I, yeah, I saw you know Eddie go over and talk to him. That was the first time in, in, in my recollection that I even laid eyes on him. Uh, didn't know who he was. I'd never worked for him. I'd never been on a uh, Dennis Corluzzo show. And you know, so uh, that that being said, if I didn't know him, he obviously could not have known me, other than just a, a name in the business. And, and of course, being a part of the NWA and having a, a huge stranglehold in the New Jersey, Pennsylvania area, a lot of events, Central Jersey, South Jersey. That's who our main promoter was, John and I, uh, where we lived, was Dennis Carluzzo and all the NWA uh, New Jersey shows. So we were very familiar with the shows at the time, but that's interesting to know that you didn't really know him too much. What had you heard about his reputation as a promoter? Well, it wasn't so much what I heard. It was the things that I saw. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd go to the ECW arena, and the uh, fire marshal would show up and, you know, start counting heads. And we'd come out of the show, and there'd be flyers on all of our cars, you know, putting down ECW and saying they should go to close or so and, you know, that sort of thing. So he, would, he, he made it a very overt attempt at trying to undermine ECW initially, which made it all the more uh, ironic you know, that he was willing to try to get, sit down and do business with us. Uh, you know, at that time, obviously, you know, our, our reputations hadn't yet preceded us as to the FTW attitude of, of, of ECW. Um, but the fact that he had tried so hard uh, to undermine ECW, you know, to me, it's just a, a cheap-ass shot, you know, to call the to call the uh, fire marshal and say, hey, you know, Ted and Paws are having a... Uh, show it to my Eastern Gorman, so I think they're way over limit. You know, just trying to cut your legs off that way because you know you can't outdraw them with your product, and so you try to chop them off another way. And what, what he didn't understand at the time was all, all that took was Paul Heyman to go out and make one reference to that, whether it was on the show or in the ring, and every fan in that building became an ardent ECW soldier. You know, so it, it, it's like one of these things that, like, hey, you know, let, let's ban this song because it's con it's got some controversial language in it. What's every every kid in the country wants to hear that song because they want to hear what's so controversial. You 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 add you you, you put sunshine on it and allow it to grow. You just make it bigger than it ever would be. And you know, it's it, it's you know the forbidden fruit syndrome. And that's exactly what Dennis Paluzzi did. He tried so hard to undermine ECW, and thereby doing that uh, added to the ECW legend early on 